He is back, our unofficial, no, official Maryland correspondent. That's right, Ben Dixon of Testudo Times. Oh, God, we got a big one coming up. Yeah, let, let's find out about his Terrapins. Let's go. Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Locked on Spartans listeners, thank you so much for kicking off your day with us here at the Locked on Podcast Network. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. And this anxiety attack that I'm currently having is brought to you by the Michigan State basketball team. But uh, this this man joining us over here, Ben Dixon, you got to be feeling okay about about your guys over here. First of all, before that, how you doing? I don't want to be a rude host. How, how you doing? How you been ever since football season? Last time we chatted, you doing okay? Doing great. Happy to be back on. I love the official correspondent designation you gave me there. Um, I'll, yeah. I'll take that. Um, but doing great. Doing great. How are you? Horrible. I, I'm terrible. I, I don't sleep well anymore. Uh, I'm just checking every bracketology that's out there, seeing we're either an eight seed, a nine seed, some have us as a 10 seed, and then my blood pressure spikes. And and I think, why am I like this about a college sports team? But hey, I'm not going to change anytime soon. And I highly doubt anyone listening will, or maybe you won't as well, Ben. I don't want to speak for yourself, but really like as a Maryland fan, how are you just doing <laughs> so far this season? You kind of wear... Michigan State is at in the bracketologies that I've seen. You're that eight seed, nine seed. Is that kind of where you expected things to be so far this season, or is this a pleasant surprise, or dare I say, even a disappointment? Where are we at? Yeah, I think I think with college basketball, I think it's the one sport where the season's what thirty one regular season games, and expectations change from non conference to the start of Big Ten play yeah. to the end of it, and it's it's really a roller coaster ride. I'd argue more than any other season. So I think the expectations coming in for Kevin Willard's first year, where look, this roster is not that good. Kind of pieced okay. together, you got a few impact returners, um, some transfers. We don't know where they'll be, um, and this team was projected to finish tenth in the Big Ten. Obviously, they started eight and zero. The expectations yeah. changed there up to thirteen, I think, at the AP poll. Then a really tough stretch from, I want to say, mid-December to mid-January. Um, lost a bunch of games, kind of firmly on the bubble, and now winners of four in a row playing pretty much like they were during that 8-0 uh, no start. Um, teams kind of has this winning identity that they figured out, um, kind of got away from it a little bit during that uh, rough month or so. But I think I think the Maryland fans got to be feeling pretty good with what they're seeing right now, playing their best basketball as of right now, doesn't matter most yet, but on that track. Yeah. Now, Kevin Willard is the reason that I and many Michigan State fans have trust issues in their day-to-day -day life. Because a few years ago, 2019, when he was the head coach of Seton Hall, he's talking before the game that his star player, Miles Powell, just doesn't have a leg injury, but they might just put him down like, like a horse with a broken leg. Like, he, he might just not make it. And then, sure enough, the next day he plays against Michigan State. He plays the entire game and has 37 points. So yes, anytime a coach says that, ah, it's unlikely he's going to play. I, I can't, I can't trust them anymore. But that's just a story that has nothing to do with Maryland. That's just a story that I wanted to rehash. But that said, though, how do you like Kevin Willard in his first year so far at Maryland? What are the terrible yeah, he is, on? he's he's an awesome guy to be around um, as as a member of the media, and he's he, I think just the way you know he has this team playing really hard. They're pressing, uh, which was I think a lot of. Um, gotcha. the identity that, that fans didn't like with Mark Turgeon early on. They're they're playing fast tempo. The press has become their identity. They play really – when they're winning, the defensive intensity is off the charts. I mean, you're seeing opposing coaches come in and say, Maryland out physical us. I think that's something that fans have loved, just his, his ability to in, instill this buy-in, um, the intensity defensively among the players. Um, offensively, it could be ugly at times, I think. Sure. <laughs> um, there, there's no doubt about that um, so far. But – look, when this, this team's shooting the ball well, um, they can play with anyone in the country. And I think just the identity that he's built with this team and, and how the fans can associate with that, um, you have to like what you're seeing in year one just because, look, expected to finish bottom half of the, the Big yeah. Ten and now in a, in a tie for third place on February 6th. I think I think everyone will take that. So is the defensive identity is, is just what stirs the drink over there down at Maryland, obviously. Is it wing defense, like defenders? Is it in the front court or is it just all over the court? Is, is the defense strong? 
Well, it starts, it starts with the press. Uh, I'm yeah. just kind of in, in, installed the signature press. And when they weren't making buckets during that tough stretch, look, you gotta, you gotta have a dead ball to be able to press. And when you get down yeah. 17, nothing at Michigan and you can't make a shot, then you can't press and that game's over from the start. <laughs> um, but at home, they're just, they're such a better shooting team. So they're able to get in that press. Um, he does a really good job mixing up with some two, three zone man to man. Um, and then okay. just perimeter defense is probably the the best thing there. Maryland's I think 28 um, and three point defense in the country um, out of what, 363 teams. Um, so that's kind of been their calling card, really shutting down teams defensively. And then on the interior as well, um, Julian Reese is, is really becoming a star at, at, at big, but he's a little undersized, only about six, nine um, and, you know, look, he and the front court got dominated against Hunter Dickinson in Michigan on January 1st. But since then, they've had good performances against Hunter Dickinson the second time. Zach Eady at Purdue limited, limited him more or less. You know, yeah. there's only so much you can do there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, no, you're and, then, right. and then that um, was against that Indiana game as well. Trace Jackson Davis, only 16 points held below a season average there, too. So. That's not bad. Anytime you can hold him to under 20, like, yeah, okay, you're, you're doing okay things uh, Mm -hmm. on defense. And just to stick with defense, just for another question here, we're coming off a game us us state fans um, where Rutgers, they were mixing it up. They did throw a little bit of two, three zone on MSU. They threw a little bit of man. What 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 would you say is the split of zone versus man? Is it just kind of depending what they agree upon about the timeout? Do they go into the game with a game plan have to switch through or what? is played more um i i'd say it really depends on the opponent um for the big dominant teams the Mm -hmm. team defense and just sending doubles at these guys has been pretty much impeccable um but they've also been a a really steady man team just depending on you know the opponent and i also think the the press just um it goes hand in hand with that if you're going to make shots it kind of just changes how you're going to play the game defensively um so if, if Maryland's able to get in their press tomorrow against against Michigan State, it, it means shots are probably falling and, and things are going decent enough offensively where, where they'll put themselves in a good position to win the game. Now, when things weren't going well in December, was that strictly all offense or was there even like defensive lapses back then too? Or was it just such a bad stretch where it was a little bit of everything? I think I think it was a little bit of everything. I think okay. one thing that, that Willard harped on was schedule sometimes dictates how you play. Sure. And – yeah, it's true. I think I think fans didn't love hearing that at the time, but when you look at the yeah. schedule, they played a, a four-game stretch of Illinois, Wisconsin, Tennessee, and UCLA in a span of less than two weeks. Like that's going to be hard for any team in the country. Yeah. Um, and then they started Big Ten play, um, or the resumption, excuse me, with Michigan on the road, Rutgers on the road. What three of their first four uh, games in Big Ten play on the road? So they tough. they kind of felt like it was a really tough schedule. Um, offensively, the shots just weren't falling either. Um, but once they got home, they were able to figure out more of their identity. Uh, no place like home. And God, I hope that's the case for Michigan State coming up here on Tuesday because we were talking before recording and like, hey, how, how, how you been? And what's going on? How's the team? And you're like, oh, yeah, we're playing with house money over in Maryland. Things are going pretty well. And whatever the opposite of house money is, is what Michigan State is playing with. And I just. If MSU loses Tuesday, I think even the most diehard, blind faith state fan would start to feel a little nervous about how things are going to be going here in the last seven games of the season. But I digress. Uh, we will be talking more about your Terrapins here in a hot second. Ben. We actually want to switch the conversation to the offensive side of the ball because, well, that's that's the other half of the game, obviously. But yep. first, I need to talk people's ears off about Built Bar. Gang, we're talking about the best protein bar in the land. It says right here in front of me, hey, Say it tastes as good as a candy bar, but no, I care about you. I will not lie to you. I will be honest with you. It tastes even better than a candy bar. We're talking dynamic, delicious flavors like churro puff, coconut, almond, peanut butter, brownie, and also it's going to treat your body very well. That's right. Most of these Built Bars, only 130 calories, just four grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. If you wolf one of these Built Bars before you go to the gym, before you watch a state game, before your date at the office, date grocery shopping, you're not going to feel weighed down. You're just going to be feeling the energy with that split of low calories, low sugar, but high protein. And best of all, we're all about convenience over here at Built Bar. Built.com is a fantastic website. Go find the flavor that you are missing in your life or for added convenience. If you're at Sam's Club, if you're at Walmart, go find a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puffs. That's right. It's not just at Built.com anymore. It's also at Sam's Club and Walmart. Any way you can get your hands on it, any way you can get your taste buds on it, do so. Load up on Built Bars at Built.com. Go. 
treat yourself because, hey, we care about you. Come on. All right. Ben, I uh, could not help to notice, and I, I sorry to speak ill about your team here. Looking some stats up, and wow, the three-point shooting leaves a little to be desired. I think it's 313th in the nation at three-point percentage. However, you guys are still winning games. Uh, you know, the three-point ball isn't the only chance to score. So how, how on earth do you guys score if it's not the three-point ball? <laughs> Yeah, the three-point shooting does certainly leave a lot to be desired. Um, yeah, it's tough. <laughs> that, <clears throat> excuse me, dealing with a little bit of a, a cold here, but this is your flu that game. Minnesota okay. game. Yeah, <laughs> game. that uh, that Minnesota game where they ended up winning by what thirty-five points on the road uh, Saturday night. Shot the ball at a remarkably high level, nine of twenty-one from three, and it was just starting the game. I think it was five for seven. The game was over five minutes into that one. Um, Look, the three-point shooting has, has certainly left a lot to be desired. Like I said, Don Carey came over from Georgetown, had a few prior st pit stops. He was supposed to be that three-point sniper at 40%. He's only gotcha. at about 30% right now. Um, and not a lot of other guys stepping up and really taking the load there as well. I think Maryland is, what, 313th in the country in, in three-point percentage. Certainly not good. Um, but this team has excelled driving to the hoop. Um, Jameer Young, who's – you know, evolved into one of the best point guards in the Big Ten, and I think the country as well, just given his performances gotcha. so far this season. He gets to the hoop with ease. Um, and then I think Hakeem Hart and Dante Scott um, at that 3-4 spot on offense, um, they're kind of matchup nightmares in a sense where they can hurt you from three. I know the numbers haven't necessarily indicated that throughout the whole season, but very dangerous in the post, especially Dante Scott when he's at his best. Um, he can get a hook shot in that mid-post, low post, and that's kind of his bread and butter. Um Really, really physical guy for for a four. Um, I know he's yeah. only what uh, six eight, but he's he can you know bang with some of the bigger bodies in the conference for sure. Um, and just just his physicality down low and and Akeem Hart being a little bit of a tough matchup offensively as well. Those two have been the difference at least inside. And Julian Reese also taking some steps. You saw him you know earlier on in the season dealt with a little bit of a shoulder injury, had some trouble going against those tougher bigs like Hunter Dickinson, guys on Tennessee, UCLA. But now you're seeing him go right at Zach Eady, go right at Trace Jackson Davis. I think his confidence has kind of taken a step to that next level. Um, and he's kind of improved and polished on his offensive game a little bit more there too as well. So I think those three guys are definitely outside of Jameer getting to the hoop down low. I think this team has gotten better um, in the paint and, uh, you know, a little bit of versatility there with those three guys as well. That's the last thing I wanted to hear that – your, your post player is doing well like because if you're just a decent post player against Michigan State like career night coming up for you <laughs> you're, you're gonna have at least a double double if not your career high in points and maybe your career high in rebounds so god okay uh no relax all right it's gonna be okay that's no, probably not gonna be okay. no I wouldn't um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say completely <laughs> completely dominant from from a post perspective but I think when the offense is fully clicking because this team just sure. isn't a good three-point shooting team. Jabir Young is that guy. Like he, He's averaging 20-something per game at home, and, and when he's having a great game, he gives Maryland a really good chance to win. But I think when when those three guys are also playing well, Hart, Reese, and Scott, it, it yeah. makes Maryland a pretty tough guard offensively, even when they're not shooting the ball well. Now, Dante Scott, so I think that matchup between Dante Scott and Malik Hall is going to be fascinating yeah. because, you know, Malik's also, you know, 6'8"-ish. He plays the four, very physical as well. So I think that's going to be an awesome individual matchup. So two questions about Dante Scott. First one is how did he get accepted for an 11th year of eligibility? I swear to God, he was playing – for Maryland before they even joined the big 10 and how has he improved over his career? Like, is he doing something different that he hasn't in his first few years or is he just the same player, which is still, still good for him? Yeah, I think, I think with Dante, by the way, he does still have his COVID year if he wants to come back next year. Oh, so great. I, awesome. it might, might be, his, <laughs> might be his, his, his 12th year of eligibility there. If Perfect. You want. But I think, I think with Dante, just the way he's progressed offensively, inside the perimeter because I think he always had that three-point capability like he shot 44 percent in his sophomore year from three he's only at yeah. about 30.4 percent now that's been a tougher go from three there but he's kind of polished his game I think the, the word matchup nightmare is used with him just because he can take bigger guys inside off the dribble because he, he's quicker than them he could also a guy similar size like Malik Hall um, mm. you know he could back him down he's, he's really strong inside he's really kind of changed his body I think he lost 27 pounds this offseason, cut nearly 7% of his body fat. So that, that body transformation is something that's been really big for him in terms of being able to be physical inside and also extend his game and become this this three-level scorer that Maryland needs him to be. 
So I, I'd say that's definitely the biggest thing um, with Dante Scott there. And I think some to also keep in mind with Dante is earlier in his career, he was forced to kind of play the five when Maryland was undersized gotcha. um, in, it, in its front court. And I think Maryland's also an undersized team now. Um, Julian Reese foul trouble has been an issue with him. But even with him out of the game, um, Patrick Millian, the backup forward, um, he's only about six, seven, but he's he's proved he's serviceable off the bench to play that five role. So Dante Scott being able to play kind of more of that three level role offensively has, has certainly helped them. And that leads right into my following question is what does the bench look like? Are you guys deep at all or is it pretty tight with that just starting five man rotation that you guys have? Yeah, so I, I think going into the year, that was one of the really big concerns of, okay. of what is this bench going to provide? And now. I think those worries have subsided a little bit. The rotation's pretty pretty much a firm seven now with that starting five. And then Ian Martinez, who's playing the best basketball of his Maryland career, coming off the bench as that sixth man, kind of taking some of the load as, as the backup two. Um, and then Patrick Vermillion, the, the backup big that I just mentioned there. He's not yep. going to provide much offensively, but he's kind of an, an energizer bunny. Um, really good rim protector for his size, really good defensive instincts, good rebounder there um and then ian martinez really good slasher he shot the ball at a decent rate in some games um but he, he can hurt you in a, in a variety of ways offensively when he's playing his best as well and jahari long's kind of that eighth guy he'll get spot minutes sometimes the rotation will be seven sometimes it'll be eight um he, he's the backup one um in, in that sense when jameer's off the floor and, and he's a really good passer um really good gift for um you know his vision and finding teammates on the floor but that rotation's kind of shrunk to seven with jahari long as, as okay. that eighth and so there's plenty to be frightened about for state fans. You know, the, the press is going to be something new. We've seen it on and off this year, but Maryland does it really well. You guys have bodies in the front court, and that's all it takes sometimes to beat Michigan State. Um, but with that said, let, let's spin this around. What frightens mm-hmm. you about the game? G- give us something to feel good about before this game, please. I, we, we need it. We need it. I, th- I think for one, uh, Michigan State, the Breslin Center is a really hard place to play. I know Maryland has oh, had success yeah. there that first year in the Big Ten. Um, and then the, the COVID year, Anthony Cowan went bananas um, in, in a win almost single-handedly, given, given the Terps the win in Michigan State there. So I think just being home, and, and Maryland has struggled on the road. Um, Minnesota was the Maryland's first conference win, and then the only road – or conference road win, excuse me. And the only other road win Maryland had was against a Louisville team that is – absolutely horrendous this season um so i think that's probably the biggest thing there um when you look at maryland struggles on the road in the past maybe that you know disappeared in that minnesota game maybe that they got over the hump and and took the you know proverbial monkey off the back there uh but but we'll see i think the Breslin center is going to be the biggest difficulty for maryland yeah. um tomorrow night and then um michigan state uh what top 43 point shooting team uh, how have you got what middle of the pack in, in conference play maryland's been mm-hmm. really good um, perimeter defense wise, but just Michigan State being at home, if, if if they could settle in, and you know maybe Tyson Walker hits a three to get the crowd going, um, yeah, maybe they 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 roll off a, a really good shooting night. I think that'll be something to worry about, even with Maryland's perimeter defense. That defensive intensity just has to has to travel on the road. It did against Minnesota, but you got to be able to stack games if you're Maryland in that regard. There is no shortage of candidates for Spartans to have a good bounce back game after the monstrosities that we saw on Saturday. Uh, yeah, I, I, I watched the end of that. That was that was just a brutal offensive game. It, it set basketball back, I think, a couple decades. It was horrible. It was horrible. I watched with four other people, and like I apologized to them for making them watch the game. I was like, that <laughs> could not have been desirable for anyone in this room, and. Uh, but yeah, it wasn't. So, oh God, yeah. we're gonna try to turn the page. Um, I I cannot have a show as a talking head, you know, lame podcaster without asking this very basic question. But hey, Ben, do you have a prediction for Tuesday night at Breslin Center? Ooh, it's it's gonna be tough. I think, obviously, you know that line's not out there yet. But I think Michigan State will probably be a slight favorite just being at home. Maryland has played really well. Um, I think it's gonna be a really competitive game. I think. Probably for Michigan State, stopping Jameer Young is going to be the key just because he's been the, the, the motor that, that runs the boat for Maryland here. Um, I think I think Michigan State's going to be able to get a slight win here at home. I think the Breslin Center gives them an advantage. I think it's going to be one of those Big Ten games. Maybe not as bad offensively as that game at the Garden uh, Saturday, like you said, you had to experience. But uh, I think it's going to be, you know, muck it up, slow it down type of game. Uh, Michigan State's going to be able to dictate a little bit at home uh, the key for Maryland, if Maryland makes early shots, I think they're going to be able to win the game. But I think Michigan State's going to be able to set the tone, um, 
squeak out. Um, I'm going to say a four point win for uh, for Michigan State Tuesday night. Sold, sold. I'll take it. If there's a contract where I can sign that, I, I'll, I will sprint there with a the pen. So that sounds great. I'll take <laughs> a win in any worst way possible. So Ben, can't thank you enough, man. You're awesome with football season. You're you're just as awesome in basketball season. So always great talking to you. Where where can we find you uh, if people either want to agree with what you're saying or just yell at you online? Where where can we find you? Well, really appreciate that, Matt. You can find me on Twitter at Ben Dixon underscore underscore. Um, I'm always uh, throwing out a bunch of Maryland content, just some general college basketball stuff as well. I'm a big junkie. And then, um, you know, testudotimes.com, that, that's where you can find all my articles, either, you know, day of the game, day after the game, somewhere in between. Um, a lot of sure. Maryland content <laughs> on there as well. So if you guys are curious, um, we, do, we do great work over there. I'd like to think so. Um, check that out. Um, yeah. Learn from Maryland for yourself. Hopefully this this conversation um, let the Michigan State fans feel a little bit better about yourself heading into the game uh, tomorrow night. Should be a good one, a really big one in that as well. Oh, yeah. No, it, it'll be competitive. Yeah. Um, it's going to be just two hours of internal hell for all of us fans. But uh, we're going we're gonna to find a way to make it through. Um, but, yeah. It's that time of year. I, I hate it, but I love it. I come crawling back every time. It's the best, but it's the worst. <laughs> yep. Well, hey, Ben, thanks thanks a lot. I really do appreciate you. And, uh, yeah, hope hope you uh, enjoy the game the rest of your week, man. Of course. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me up. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And we are really excited about our new betting partner for Lockdown because they are the number one sports book in America. Yes, we are talking FanDuel, of course. And if you're new to FanDuel, well, hey, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel right now so you can bet Super Bowl 57 with a no-sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So what are you waiting for? Hop on the FanDuel wave, the FanDuel Sportsbook. It's safe, secure, super easy to use, and best of all, Mr. FanDuel is paying you immediately when you withdraw. I actually did it over the weekend. Not on our Spartans, of course, but I bet Indiana to beat Purdue. Within five minutes of the game ending, money is in my account. I'm ready to bet more on Super Bowl 57. I hope you are too. Join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to claim your no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Now, let's get into some basketball here. Um, This was a question that we couldn't get to yesterday, ran out of time. But after the game on Saturday, I had the old tweet where it was, hey, Drop your thoughts below. We'll read some of them on the show and react. And then Rachel, who's an all-time listener, always comes through. She writes in a thought on a lot of people's minds. Uh, As the years go on, especially, she writes, Izzo's first week of February, his record over the last seven years has got to be something like one and nine. Seems like it's always the worst play of the season. And I was thinking that too. And I know a lot of other people were, uh, whether it's on Twitter, online, just in day-to-day conversation, talk in Michigan State, it's like, I feel like they suck <laughs> right when they get into February. And no, Rachel, you're not crazy. No, you who also thinks that you're not crazy because it's not one to nine. It's not that bad, but it's not good. It's not good. Uh, so what we have here, since the 2016-17 season, the last seven years, Michigan State in the first week of February, so February 1st to February 7th, five and eight, five and eight. However, however, let's add some recency bias in here because since the 2019 season, yes, the final four season, Michigan State in the first week of February is two and seven. Yes, two and seven to kick off the month of February since 2019. And actually five times. Since the 2016-17 season, Michigan State has had a three-game losing streak somewhere in mid-January or February. And if they lose on Tuesday to Maryland, that would be six of the last seven years that has happened. So Michigan State is trying to stave off some unfortunate history right there. And look, sometimes the the rally cry is, hey, it's okay. Michigan State always has this three-game losing streak. They'll rally the troops back together, but... And I'm sorry to dump a bucket of cold water on that. They've only done that once, right? Uh, Had this bad three-game stretch where they lose every game and then rally the troops to have a sensational end to the the year. And that was in the 2018-19 season, the one that ended in the Final Four. Okay, the the other times, um, no. (laughs) Michigan State really not, or really did not get back on track. Um, It ended with the high seed. 
ended in the first weekend. Uh, the one time I actually didn't have that losing streak was in that season where it did end in the second round against Syracuse. If you want to know what that one season was where they didn't have a three game losing streak, but yeah, um, it happens a lot. And, uh, it's very common for it not to get any better after the losing streak happens, except for 2018, 19. But, um, Oh God, I don't know if Cassius is walking through that door and I don't know if anyone on this team is going to be Cassius ask for the Spartans moving forward. Um, before we get you out the door, Onto the rest of your day here. Just want to go through some quotes from Tom Izzo's press conference today. He met with the media. And we got two quotes here that Sam Sklar of the State News tweeted out. And then one from Chris Solari of the Free Press as well. So just want to credit those gentlemen before going any further reading their quotes they got from Izzo. And then Sam Sklar had a quote that almost had me just, oh, just running my head through some drywall. Um, not for a good reason. He writes, Izzo on having three players averaging over 30 minutes per game, quote, I have no choice. <laughs> All right. Says he doesn't want to play Joey Hauser 30 minutes a game, and he believes Tyson Walker is the only one that could do it consistently. Malik Hall could have done it, quote, back in the day, but can't now. Um, we've cried up and down about this transfer portal, the situation, how it was handled. Michigan State doesn't bring anyone in. They leave some scholarships just there on the table. Maybe they'll roll over to next year or you could redeem them at the end of the year for a stuffed animal. I don't know. But we've we, we've cried about this throughout the season. And, look, there, there's nothing that could change. You can't go back and redo things. Um, yes, they did try to get another wing player. They did not even try to get a big man. I digress. It, it, it didn't happen. But what is the annoying part here is just <laughs> is the quotes that almost make it just seem like Tom is the victim here, right? It's 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 the lack of lip service that us state fans are getting. And no, he's never going to say, hey, guys, I screwed up. Uh, you're right. Our centers aren't good at all. Uh, I should have gotten a big man. Like, no, that would be ridiculous for him to get in front of a microphone and say that. That'd just be very mean to his players. But it's the idea that he keeps saying like, oh, I, I, I had no choice. I was handcuffed. My hands were tied. Or just being so defiant that, yeah, you're right, I didn't get a big man in the transfer portal because I ride with my guys. It's like, I, it, you would just really appreciate if there was maybe a shred of awareness or humility, but look, it's it's just not here. And, oh, man, it's just, I, I, had, I have no choice. Well, we, we could have given some effort here. Oh, well, anyway, no one here wants to hear me cry about that any longer. Um, or maybe you do, I don't know. Uh, Izzo also said about Mighty Sissoko, quote, it's not a lack of effort and it's not a lack of focus. I think it's a lack of maybe some confidence on his part. And I'm sorry, like this is going to sound so Debbie Downer, but like that's that's part of the problem, Tom, is that it isn't for a lack of effort or lack of focus. Like this is just what it is at this point. Like he is trying his best. This might be the best he could play. And that's what you, th this is what we have. Just career nights from opposing big men almost every single night. So, yeah, I, uh, you know, stomach it better if the guy just wasn't trying or just had a lack of focus. But, no, like, he's he's trying his best. And it's not anywhere near the, the upper two-thirds caliber of what a big 10 big man should be. All right, let's move it along here. Um, yeah, let, let's, let's end on this quote. And you know what? It, th this is a, a good one to end on. Tom, you know, I, I love you. I think we all do, um, even though I just really question your transfer report. Whatever. Uh, he writes, quote, don't think we're desolate and down and out because we're not. So that's right. If, if you're sick of hearing from me and my cries about this team, listen to the head coach himself. They are not down and out. They are not desolate. They will prevail. They have been through this, especially a lot in the last three years. So they, they're not, no strangers to this feeling, but maybe this time they get it out the mud. Maryland, 9 p.m. If they lose, I will cry on air. It's going to get ugly. You, you got this, guys. But, hey, if they win, all right, everything's okay. We're back on track. And then we can advance to Ohio State on Sunday and just go from there. So we'll see. So thank you so much, guys, for making us your first listen every single day here in the Locked On Podcast Network. If you ever want to reach out, LockedOnSpartans at gmail.com. We will be here to answer your questions. We will be here to talk about the games and any other news that breaks because, again, we do this five days 
a week. Until then, please go enjoy the rest of your day. I love you all. You guys are the best. Go Green.